kind of a packed agenda, so we want to make sure to get through it. All right, so welcome everyone. Wi-Fi housekeeping details. Um, you'll want to jump on the guest network and then you'll open up a browser to get to those parts. This will be especially critical if you are going to be booting up Tableau Public and you don't want to get like gnarly offline map messages as we do our workout. Okay. So here we go. Uh, we like to start every user group kind of introducing ourselves. So this is me. I'm Ann Jackson. I'm one of your Tableau user group leaders. About me, I'm a Tableau Desktop Certified Professional and a Qualified Associate. I'm really proud to be a Data Visualization Consultant at Slal, which means that I get to play with Tableau for a living, which is amazing. Um, I have a personal blog that's dedicated to data visualization, um, visual analytics, and all things Tableau that you can check out at jackson2.com. Um, if you're familiar with the Tableau world, a lot of what happens community-wide is on Twitter. So you'll find out more about events if you follow me on my Twitter and you'll learn more about it in general. So I encourage you to do that. You don't have to. Um, probably more professional would be to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, seriously, I'm all about um, networking and community. So just feel free to um, tag me with an invite. And if you have any kind of questions or if you just want to like chat, feel free to shoot me an email at my Slalom email, which is just my name at Slalom. Then we have Michael. You want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. I'm Michael Perillo. I'm a co-leader of the Phoenix Tableau Use Group as well, along with Dan. I am a Tableau certified server professional, uh, desktop qualified. Uh, I've been using Tableau now since 2011. What um, version is that? Six. <laughs> uh, it turned me off, so I was not into Tableau at all until really eight came out. But can't get enough of it now. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. So, how many of you here are brand new to Tableau? This is kind of your your first thing. Good. So it's uh, it's definitely something that'll uh, you know give you a lot of opportunities, launch your career. That's one of the things that uh, we focus on in the user group is tailoring these topics to you to help you skill build, uh, do lots of things a lot better. If you do have any questions, as Ann said, the um, best way to get in touch with us is uh, on social networking. If you're on Twitter or LinkedIn or any one of those, um, if not, get on it because that's that's how you're going to really engage, not just with us, but with the rest of the community. I also want to let you know um, before we kind of move on, um, at the desk where you kind of got your things, if you did not grab one of these, this is also a form for you to fill out uh, if you're interested in really hearing from us. I know we have our LinkedIn side and um, some other avenues that you can join up. Uh, but we do have other user groups in the Valley. Um, so we've got Alteryx and SQL Server, um, the Tableau user group. We also have, uh, and we'll talk about United by Data. If you're also using uh, Microsoft products, uh, we're gonna launch the Power BI user group, which will start next month. Um, so whether you're using it or not, it's nice to have kind of that cross-platform, across all uh, areas. So we invite you to join those, hear more about them. Yeah, and uh, Michael brought up a great administrative point, which is just how can you find us. So beyond just following us, like the Phoenix Tableau User Group, there's a community on the Tableau Community Forum. So if you Google Phoenix Tableau User Group, the first result is Community Forum. We post these details on there, and then we have a LinkedIn user group as well that's free, you know, open for anyone to join. Okay, so what's on the agenda for today? We'll do kind of a community update. This is what happens every time. And then I'm gonna do kind of the Get Tableau Fit segment. And then we'll do a break. And then Justin, who's graced us with his presence, will come up and he will show us data governance in action. If you were here in March, Michael set the stage and talked about data governance in the world of Tableau. And Justin's gonna give us kind of a hands-on, gnarly take of what he stepped into, I guess. His, I don't wanna give too much away. So it'll be really exciting. All right, community update. Um, for those of you that have been here, you know that I always like to spotlight our really strong users in the community and talk about the different things that are going on. As Tableau ramps up for its user conference, they have what's called an Iron Viz contest. How many people know what Iron Viz is? OK, 
Okay, so it's not very many. Um, how many people know what Iron Chef is? Okay, that's more. So um, I'll preface and say Iron Biz is three people come on stage and they battle to the death in 20 minutes to be the best dashboard or you know set of data visualizations, if you will, will during um, the Tableau conference and someone uh, reigns supreme at the end of it. So to find these participants throughout the year, Tableau Public specifically runs Iron Biz Feeder Contest. So the first one they did, and it actually ended, I think right at the end of March, I wanna say they might have announced the winner either March 31st or beginning of April. And what's interesting is there were 62 participants, this is globally, worldwide, and three of them were actually from our user group. So if you do the math, that's 5%, which is pretty phenomenal, two were women. I mean, I was one of them, but there were others. So um, this just speaks to the strength of our community and something that we should all be um, really supportive of and really proud of, honestly. Uh, it's not easy to put your visualization skills out in the public eye for people to judge. And so it's really awesome when people show up and share it. And especially for this particular one, I'll give you my own take on it. So this one was about connecting, so new 10.2 features connecting to GIS geospatial files, uh, different connectors. So it's like you have to use that spatial file connection as part of your visualization. So I'm not very, I don't spend a lot of time doing geospatial analysis, I guess would be fair to say. So this was outside of my comfort zone. I kind of think maps are a little bit boring. So it was really interesting to find a data set and to work with it. And I think that um, everyone that participated should be commended for the effort of affixing this to the earth and somehow analyzing the world. So just wanted to share that with you guys. You can search for these. Um, if you Google like Iron Viz Geospatial, you'll find them, you'll get to see them, you'll interact with them. Uh, post this, uh, I will put links out there to all three of the different visualizations that are from our community. And Michael, you wanna give a little recap on this? Sure do. How many of you attended the Analytics Unleashed event this week? Pretty good? Good stuff? So. This is the first time we've done this here in Phoenix. Uh, we're now in kind of year three, uh, just honing, honing the event better. And really the concept around this is, is to build community um, and to make you aware of what these tools, and platforms like Tableau, Alteryx, and this is the first year we brought Power BI into the mix. Again, we're not here to say, hey, Tableau is the only tool that you're gonna use realistically, you probably have a mix of tools in your organizations. And how can you use them uh, to complement one another? Not say, hey, this is better or this one's better. There's always gonna be a fit for purpose. There's always gonna be you know, uh, a preference. So we bring in speakers from, we try to bring in speakers locally, but uh, we did have three that came in across the country. Uh, and these are data rock stars. These are people that are in the communities, uh, whether it's their local user groups or online, or social and the forums, um, and doing really phenomenal things. And mentioned the Iron Viz. Uh, we have Curtis Harris, uh, who won the Iron Viz contest last year, uh, give a great demonstration on how they utilize Tableau uh, at his organization, Health Catalyst. We also had uh, all three product vendors in. So Tableau, Microsoft, and Alteryx give you an idea of what the products are, what's on the roadmap, what does the industry look like, uh, these events, again, are really geared towards you to understand how people can be successful with these tools, uh, what's on for the next year, maybe three years down the road, um, and get you interested in uh, analytics in general. So again, um, you know, these are the types of groups. Come join the user group, come see what's going on. Uh, we're gonna have a great presentation from uh, Justin. Uh, we encourage all of you to come up and present. We know that sometimes presentations and get in front of people can be scary, but uh, that's how we learn. That's how we network and encourage one another. Um, so talk to either myself or Anne. Uh, let's get you signed up and speaking and engaged. There's gonna be th two more Iron Viz Feeder contests. Uh, Anne's gonna jump in in just a moment into the Workout Wednesday. These are perfect things for you to do skill building. If those of you that raised your hand are brand new to Tableau, this is how you start learning the product. Uh, push yourself, start learning new things. She mentioned GIS is not you know, her cup of tea, that's fine. She jumped into it, learned it, 
and she had a pretty awesome dashboard. So uh, the social commentary on diamonds, guys. It was <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> so that's that. Um, if you did not attend this event, um, you know, talk to one of us after. Uh, if you're not signed up with our user group, we'll make these available. The slide decks, any of the workbook files, uh, some of the videos and uh, pictures. Um, we want you to get excited. You know, we'll do that again next year. Uh, I thought it was a really good event. All right. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I know. We're getting, I, I, I hate to do all the admin stuff at the beginning, but this is just so we can get to the fun part. So 2017 events list. Um, I have a new kind of startup. You, User group's not really the right term. Organization's a better term for it. It's called United by Data. Uh, the idea is it's supposed to be for women in data-centric roles to get together, to network, to get to know each other. That's the foundation of it. It is open to all genders, but it is female preferred. You get preferential treatment. So I apologize, guys, but that's just the way it's gonna be, especially as we're growing. So I encourage you to come meet up with us. We have our first meetup uh, Saturday morning. It's gonna be really casual. It's coffee at a Panera Bread for like two hours. And this is just to get to know each other. We want it to be a very organic uh, conception. So we wanna grow the vision together and figure out what we wanna do with it. I don't want, none of us, neither of us, my counterpart Layla and I, we don't want to push our vision out there. We want it to be a collective vision. So you can find the details there in terms of this user group meeting. I think you guys all know by now that are familiar that we're here every third Thursday of each month, same locker rooms, 301, 302. I guess it's 303. I don't know if it is. That would make sense. Uh, the May invite is up and it's always that same thing at the beginning, PHX tug 2017-05. And then what I'm really excited to mention is our first Viz Club. So I've had this idea for a while of taking a Saturday chunk of time and just giving everyone an opportunity to be in the same place at the same time, working on Tableau or whatever it is you do. So for me, this is an opportunity to catch up on a couple makeover Mondays that I've missed. For you, it can be an opportunity to be sitting in the same room with others using your laptop. There's no agenda. You can treat it like a hackathon. You can come with a Tableau problem. If you don't have a Tableau problem, I know we're fine lots of Tableau problems that you can solve with Tableau. We're opening it and kind of making it collaborative. So the Alter User Group is also going to be invited if Power BI has folks that want to come as well. The goal really is come in and out. I think I set it from 10 to 3. So come all day, any part of the day. There's no sign in. It's just we're there. There's going to be 30 of us in a room free um, to hang out with, with us. All right. And then just to kind of talk about what's coming up next month. So we'll always have the Get Tableau Fit, the first half in the community update. We have two presentations next month. One is a, a short, quick, almost like another micro workout session with uh, Layla Mannheim, and she's lovingly titled it One Table Calculation to Rule Them All. I'll tell you, this is not something to miss. Table calculations can be a little bit scary sometimes, and she uh, showed me something recently, at least her thought process on how she approaches them, that unlocked a lot of tableau knowledge for me, so I think it can do the same for you. And then we also have Ariel Strong coming out. Of I've labeled it data in the public sector, which is a fair assessment. Um, but what's interesting about her story is she's going to share a journey of an entire data project from start to finish, including sort of finding the data, data prep, all that stuff to get it ready to go into Tableau, and then she's going to present her project. All right, so now let's get Tableau Fit, and let me tell you about the ways you can get Tableau Fit before we actually start working out. So there's three ways in my mind. The first is Makeover Monday. How many people know what Makeover Monday is? Like your hands are not high enough? I cannot see. <laughs> okay, so every Monday, uh, one of the Tableau Zen Masters, Andy Kriebel, in conjunction with uh, his counterpart, Ava Murray, uh, present a data set and it usually an accompanying visualization and ask the community to re-visualize it. So it's a cleansed data set, they put it together for you. There's even like a baked in data story that comes with it. So if you can imagine there's like a pie chart and it's really ugly and there's some sort of like analysis or insight that was supposed to happen in this pie chart that adds up to 120% and they wanna make it better. So it gives everyone an opportunity to do that and share their results on Twitter. And I've participated in it 
I, I've missed two weeks this year because I went on vacation, but it's a really great opportunity. I think a lot of people, myself included, can be cautious about approaching a new data set. When you do this every week, that doesn't happen anymore. You start approaching data with reckless abandon. There was a Donald Trump tweet uh, makeover challenge. I, not a fan, and I figured if I could make it through that, I could make it through anything. And then there was like an NCAA one, like three weeks later. Not a sports fan can make it through that one. So it's a really great way to start getting accustomed to all kinds of data and thinking about different new ways to visualize it, and then just see what your peers are doing out in the community. There's also Workout Wednesday. I selfishly say, if you do anything, do Workout Wednesday because. These are a little bit different. They're almost time boxed. They're, it's like recreate something that's already made. How many of you actually went out and looked at the workout Wednesday that we're gonna cover tonight? All right, you're getting a t-shirt. So uh, these are also done by Andy Kriebel. I mean, he's a really great multitasker. So you get specs of a dashboard to recreate and it's usually a business question or a challenge that they're trying to answer, some sort of skill and tableau that you're trying to master. Those are every Wednesday. We'll go through one, maybe two tonight, depending on time. They're meant to be short. There have been a couple that have been really long, but they're kind of trimming it down at this point. You should be able to complete them in an hour or two hours, depending on your skill level and how comfortable you are with the concept that they're trying to cover. And then there's also Viz for Social Good, which is, I'm screwing this up. So there's Makeover Monday, there's Workout Wednesday, and then here's Viz for Social Good. So this is actually a website. Very similar concept to Makeover Monday, but what happens is a nonprofit submits their data to this website, just visitforsocialgood.com, and you get a chance to visualize it. And usually you get the prize of, um, or notoriety that comes with having the best viz for whatever it is, and it gets put on display. I tell the people that I participated in the first one, which was for a Women in Data Science conference. I made a map. It went out and it was shown like broadcast live around the world so it's kind of cool to get your name out there as like a data visualization artist and there's a good cause associated with it there was some actually interesting unicef data that i revis and it's on my tableau public profile that made it as one of the tableau public's greatest visits of all time so there's a lot of really interesting data that you can find as well maybe you're not comfortable promoting it as viz for social good but it's another way to find interesting data minimal effort all right, so let's get hands on. I'm gonna switch modes. We're gonna start with the Pareto chart. And I always like to start this with the actual specs so that everyone gets an idea of what it is we're actually doing. Okay, so this is Emma White. So Emma White and Andy Pree will both do Workout Wednesday. They toggle the weeks based on even or odds. So Emma did 14. She does evens, Andy does odds. And the task this week was to build this Pareto chart. But here you can see she gives a little bit of an explanation into why she wanted to build a Pareto chart. If I had to uh, classify Emma, I'd say that she really likes to get people using really foundational tableau skills, things that are great ways to answer questions. And she has a very direct approach. Here is the Pareto chart. We're looking at UK, what did she say, UK exports. And then she's got specs. Let me zoom out a little bit. How many people know what a Pareto chart is? Okay, that's good. So we all are familiar with the Pareto chart and the 80-20 rule, which is essentially what she's hitting on here. And it's kind of interesting if you look at it that this is a percentage down here and she's tagged on that 20% reference line and then the 80% reference line to really spotlight showcase that um, 80 20 rule so to speak all right so let me go ahead and jump into my workbook and I'm gonna just walk through my process unless someone wants to be bold and do it instead of me well let me ask you this so those of you that attempted it were you successful yes what did you think of about the difficulty level um, I had to open up the original like, okay. file and mm -hmm. kind of look at what she did. Um, I couldn't finish it, I think, entirely on my own. Got it. Anyone else? Any feedback on how it went for them? All right. Well, I will show you my process, and then 
and I will tell you where I maybe got a little bit stuck or where the aha moment was for me. So let's go back and look at this really quickly. Um, actually, let me show you the data set. It's probably the best place to start. Here's the data set. We've got the rank of each country, the destination country, the goods, the services, goods and services, and the share of UK goods and services. Everything to the right of that are calculated fields that I've added on. It's a really basic data set, and essentially it's trying to figure out, again, exactly what it says. The UK exports most of its blank to blank, and these bars are representing the countries. So in my mind, as I look at this, the bars are gonna be countries. We're somehow gonna have some sort of percentage I know a little bit about Pareto charts, so I know how they're going to be stacked with, you know, the highest contributor first and then kind of trailing from there. So this is what I did to approach it. I went ahead and I put my country out here and what was it? Goods and services. So let's see what we got to start. Okay, this was kind of the starting point. Knowing Emma and knowing how she works. You can see that there's three different things here, and when we look at our data set, we see that those are different measures. That's going to turn out to be a parameter to toggle between those measures. So I'll walk you through what that looks like. Here is my parameter creation, and this just aligns with me looking one to one to what she has. She has select here, she's got these three choices. So let's do the same thing in our workbooks. We've got services, goods, goods, and services. This just sets up my parameter. We know parameters don't work unless we actually use them somewhere. So if I use this right now, nothing's gonna happen. It's not being leveraged. So what we need to do is put that parameter in action, which just becomes a case statement. So we're saying case my parameter, when it's set to goods, then we want to call goods. When it's services and services, when it's goods and services and goods and services, the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, just because we, as we build it out, we'll need to do it. So. I started with just goods to get the basic shape of the Pareto, and this would even be more basic, right? We would have it sorted. But let's just switch that really quickly to this. So I'm just dragging and replacing. You can see it evenly sorted on me. If I were going to do a direct Pareto chart based off of this, the next thing I would do is I'm holding the control key right now, and I would drag this over and copy it. So now I have a copy of it twice. Because what I typically think of a Pareto chart is a bar chart and then a cumulative line chart going up to 100%. Then I would go ahead and go here, change this to a line chart, and then I would make this to the calculation. So there's running total, that's close, but we want percent cumulative. So you'll go in, you can edit the table calculation, get the option to add a secondary calculation, and then we're gonna select percent of total. Is everyone with me so far in terms of what's going on? So I started out, I had my bar chart that has my measure. I sorted them just to get the viz prepared and then I built out the line chart of the same thing so they're in the same order and they are adding up running total so it's going up to that entire amount and now I'm just turning that running total into that percent total. And then the last step would be to make this a dual axis and Tableau has decided to turn my bars into dots. That's okay, we can go ahead and switch it back to bars. So when I think about a Pareto chart, that's how I would start with this. But obviously what's interesting about what Emma has done, and this is the difference, is that you can see that these are actually percents down here. They're numbers. Each bar represents a percent amount. So that's intriguing to me, specifically because I know this to be, just based on how it looks, that this is probably a continuous axis not discrete. What I've built is discrete with the countries down here. Discrete being blue up here, but we want it to be green. So somehow what I need to do is turn these bars that represent the countries into percentage bars. And it's kind of interesting how you can do this. So the magic happens right here. I will just show you this. We're using two different table calculations here. The first one is index and the second one is size. How many people are familiar with index? Okay, so index essentially just puts numerics, numbers, 
to whatever your rows are. So it starts at one and it continues to index it. How many people are familiar with size? Okay, I think no one raised their hand, so that's good. So size actually is just the number of rows. Let's go down to it. Returns the number of rows in the partition. Example partition has five rows. Size is five. And then you've got your index on top. So essentially what I'm saying is I know the number of countries because that's the number of rows, that's the size, that becomes my denominator, and then my index becomes my numerator. So we can go ahead and put that on there. Let's take this off, Let's see what we get. Let's get something really ugly. And let's go ahead and adjust this. Let me take my line off. Let's see how we are actually weird is I only have one thing and this is kind of freaking me out but the reason I only have one is because I don't have uh, the country as a piece of detail anymore so there's only one value that it's aggregating to so we're gonna go ahead and drop destination country onto detail and now let's edit this table calculation let's see if we can get it to fix itself and then let's go ahead and sort this in descending order so right here I have now specified the dimension to include that destination country. Instead of le leaving it on the sort that it determined was the best sort, I want to specify what that is. So I'm gonna go from specific dimensions to custom. I'm picking that parameter select measure. Again, right now that's set to that measure that's goods and services. Doing it to the sum and I'm putting it in descending order. So now they're ranked from highest to lowest. Does that make sense? All right. So that's pretty much it. Like we do the same thing, we'll pull the line across, do the same thing, we'll do the quick table calculation running total, and we'll do the secondary one. And we'll turn this one into a line. I don't even know if she has, does she have a line? No, she didn't even have a line, so we don't even need that. Actually, she didn't have a line because this is all one thing. We'll do running total. And we will add the secondary percent total. And we go back to the control enter here. Um, oh, that's for the labels, gotcha. So running total sum, I'm going to check this because I didn't specify the dimensions and that seems to have worked out better. When I did it here, I didn't get what I wanted. there because I'm pretty sure I did the same exact thing that I had before. Did anyone see what happened that I magically missed? No? Okay. Because this is what I was anticipating to happen. I've got the running total by sum, the this, this specific dimension, the destination country, and I've got it set to my parameter select, my sum, and then my percent of total. And I think we're now at the point where we have exactly what she's got there. The next things are just kind of formatting. Um, but that's really the hard part there was taking that continuous axis and turning that into the percent totals using those two um, functions instead of what we had before. The only, and the reason that that was valuable was you could then add that reference line on here. So you can go in and you can add your constant, your 20%. I want to just show you one other thing that occurred with this viz that I found as I was doing the workout. 
And that relates to how the data is set up with the names of the countries and what she has done with the custom titling and the tool tips. So right here, we've got <coughs> UK exports, you know, X pounds of services to US. And then you can see up here, the UK exports most of its services to the US. And if we were to switch on here to something else, let's see if we can find one that's as <coughs> good as one. It might be two other countries. Let's go down here and look at what it actually says here. Two other countries. So the interesting kind of part, and these are valuable things to do, is the titling here has some logic built into it. Here it is at a basic level. So the UK exports most of it's the parameter select header, which is uh, just that, and then to this. And let's go into first country in title. So Emma was very thoughtful and decided anytime it says US, we really want to say the US to make it more intuitive to the end user. And if it's other, we really want it to say other countries. Otherwise, we want it to say whatever it is. So what's unique about this is if you go in, let's see if we can, and I probably even did this. Here's what they are in the data set, right? So I've right clicked on destination country. I'm looking at the aliases. Here they are in the actual data set. Here's what their alias is. As I started doing this, I turned other into other countries. When it's on the visualization, when I hover over the bar, it says other countries. And look at US. I, set, I put it to the US there. The alias doesn't come through, so you have to build this dynamic titling on top of it. And let's even look at this calculation a little bit more to unpack it. We're even saying what the first one is, which is kind of complicated. We only want the first one. So if we look, if when we look up and the index is one, return the attribute of the destination country in, and we want to do that for the first. And if it's equal to US, then US. Otherwise this, otherwise this. Really complicated logic to just get to the point where what's what we're doing. I know this is kind of conceptual here. Is we just want the first destination country in the title, and we're putting it as an attribute here. Everyone familiar with what the attribute uh, function does? Essentially, if it's a min or a max and they're the same value, it displays it. Otherwise, it's an asterisk. If you're ever building like dynamic titles and you get that star, it's because it's not the same throughout your data set. So this ensures that we're getting that, but we have to chunk it up. We're going to look it up. We're going to set it to this kind of thing here where the index of that country has to be one, and we're going to look up the first one. And this just bakes on top of that. So Rachel, let me ask you, did you do the titling part, or was it most you did? Great code looks a little different, I think. Or maybe it looks yeah, you know, it's interesting when you do these. Um, I'll even uh, download hers and show you guys. It's probably different logic than how I did it. And that's the great thing about these. Is if you get started and you get stuck, you have the solution. You have the solution from your peers in the community. You go look at my solution. You can see how different people do it, and it really helps you get over this sort of obstacle or hurdle that there's one solution to, do, to rule them all. So let's look at her percent countries. I'm pretty sure that that's going to be the same. So there's her index size. So she's got this as select calc. Let's look at that one. She's got the same case statement there, so that's good. Let's see if she alias these. Oh, she did. Not this one though, just other countries, which we saw in the <laughs> bar down there. And then let's double click on the title to see what the field is for this. So she's got top export title. Okay, so totally different than what I did. Well, not totally, that's probably an exaggeration, but she's using level of detail expressions to come up with the same result, and I used something completely different. But it's interesting because we got to the same result in the end. So proof to say that there's multiple ways to get to the situation. I leveraged that index and that knowledge of one being the max, and she went in and she found what the max value was for that calculation and said if it is equal to that then do then utilize it otherwise don't
All right, I think that's pretty much it for this one. Any questions about it? Any funky concepts? Anything? Anybody see anything new that they've never seen before? No. <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So everyone could just walk away and do this creator shark fold in their sleep. Completely. That's what you're telling me. Okay. Got it. Um, all right. Well then, let's move on to the next one since we have a little bit more time. This one will be quick. If I don't finish it, I'm gonna assign it to you guys as homework because it was really uh, short. Not really short, but it, it's um, pretty straightforward. So the second one, so this is Andy Kriebel. This was last week, so week 15. Someone shot out in the community, how about we do, you know, how about I post them as questions for people to answer instead of the workbook? And then Charlie kind of says, you know, don't feel obliged to, whatever. Um, maybe sneak in a workout Wednesday to blah, blah, blah. But essentially, the communication was, what do you want to do, and should we do it? So here's the requirements. The data set is, I think it's soccer data, so it must be a single chart. So we've got, uh, this is poorly done, but there's a level of detail calculation to get the leader, the, I think it's the number of days they were the leader, team has been top of the Premier League. Do it by both level detail expression and table calculation, it has to be one chart one sheet to be specific is how I interpret that. So this is what it needs to look like. One sheet. This is how I would do it, right? You've got your level of detail expression here and you've got your table calculation here. What's interesting is this really helps you understand the difference between these two concepts and how to use them. What I think is funny about this is if you look at the level of detail expression, if I hover over the bar, I don't know if you can see that or tell, but it's one continuous bar, but the table calculation, look, these are all little pieces. So this really kind of speaks to understanding the difference between how you use table calcs and what's gonna end up happening versus a level of detail expression. How many people are familiar with level of detail expressions? Okay, it's a good, a fair portion of you. I really like them, they're a newer feature they're very powerful. It lets you set the amount of aggregation. So when you think about Tableau and what you're doing in a sheet, anytime you drag on a field, that's dictating what the aggregation goes toward. But often you wanna do some more complex analytics on top of that. A really good basic example would be, you wanna see like some amounts of something and then you wanna compare it to the overall average, not the average of those, but the overall average somehow. So in that world, you might have to build a level of detail expression where that average is aggregated at a different dimensionality or granularity than what is present in your sheet. So for those instances, you will want to use a level of detail expression. Since we're running low on time, I'm gonna just show you this and explain it to you and then tell you that there's a couple different ways to do it. The notation for level of detail expressions starts kind of the same way. It starts with the fancy brace on the left and then what I call three qualifiers or modifiers, either fixed, include, or exclude. Fixed is what I like to tell people to start with if you're using a level of detail expression because you are fixing the aggregation. You are saying aggregate it to the fields that I say. So in this world I'm saying fix it by team name and match day. And what I want you to do, what do I want you to do? I want you to sum up the points total. And I specifically, because this is more complicated than that, we're saying how many days was each team at the top of the Premier League? I'm adding on, baking on another expression that's saying if the points total for a team on a match day is equal to, at the match day level, the max points total. So if we thought about that, it's score of the team on a given match day equal max score of a team of any team on the match day if they're the same then one else zero that allows us to add it up that's what's taking up this right here this is just i think the labels just so you know it's duplicated and then in the table calculation world let's take a look at what this is this is different right in this world, we're saying if the sum of the points total is equal to the window max, 
the sum of the points total then one else zero. So window max is based on the view and that's where we kind of end up with all those little boxes. And so that adds it up and does the comparison. That's what it kind of turns out to be. And then the, probably the most interesting thing here is the label, how you get it to work. It's just the, if you don't do this, it, it like redoes it all over. But I went ahead and did the window average of this table calculation version just to make it one single number. When I didn't do that, I had like the 13 replicated over and over again, I believe, or it might have added up to 27, I can't remember at this point. But I wanna show you what Andy did as well, and let's do a quick comparison. And let's see how pared down his is. Look, he just has, if points total equals fixed match day max points total, then one else is zero end. So what's interesting is Andy is less cautious than I am. So in my world, I defined out that aggregation by the team and the match day. He's not doing that. He's just saying if the point total equals the fix on the match day, max point total, then one. So this is another great learning opportunity to understand when you may or may not need to do that. Look at this. I didn't even notice this the first time when I looked at it through this filter. He's got this set to one. Let's undo that and see what happens. that's probably the difference between how he approached it and I approached it. He's adding this filter to get it to show each of these as opposed to just that top one. And then let's look at his table calculation. So he's using a double if here, but similar logic. I mean, this is just a pared down if statement for being honest here. So he's got if the window max of the sum of the points total equals the sum of the points total, then one else is zero. The last kind of fancy thing on here, which is a really good takeaway tip, is this right here. So probably the maddening thing about this is having this name of the header here, so level of detail and table calculation. How Andy has resolved for that is he's just done what I would call an ad hoc calculation. Maybe he's just typed a zero. And then he's dual accessed that, so let's move it. And he, oh, what did I do here? Let's go back. But by adding that on there and dual accessing it, he's unlocked the capability to have this now as a header. So anytime you end up with, uh, let's show you. Oh no, it's hidden here. Anytime you end up with that at the bottom and you don't want it there, let's erase that out of there. Let's clear that out. So this is where it would normally be, right? Like he would be showing that measure name down at the bottom, but he's added on this zero axis here. So I would encourage you to take away, I know I didn't really explain it very well, but that will give you the capability to add this as a title at the top, just set it zero, so you can have that there, which is really nice. This is a great one. This is a really easy one to take away and just quickly understand the difference between level of detail expressions and table calculations. More to the point is Andy's experience has been very long lived so he had to live in a world where most of this stuff was done by a table calculation as opposed to a level of detail expression. So thank your lucky stars that we're on 10-2 now and not, I don't know, eight or seven. Uh, but I encourage you to take this one away as homework. Any questions about these two concepts or how they were built? No? Okay, well that pretty much sums it up. We're gonna have more next month. For those of you that participated during the break, come up you'll get some swag from the, the swag box. Participate next month. I think, um, did you guys get an email from the Eventbrite that said which ones were going to be covered? Anyone? Yeah, you did? Okay. Let me ask you this. Are there any concepts that you guys would like to see us do together as a group? Or are you just open to whatever we show up with? Whatever we show up with. Whatever I show up Okay. <laughs> Well, just be thinking about that because there's a lot of different workouts there. Some of them are more formatting related. Some of them, like one of them was like make a hex tile map of Great Britain. So there's lots of different things out there. Um, if there's a particular subject area you want to learn and start to master, let me know, let Michael know so that we can bring that to the stage. Otherwise, 
usually what happens is I do all of these workouts as they occur, and ones that I think kind of fit well in this forum, I'll bring up to the stage and walk through, just so that it can be something like hands-on and functional, and also something that if you got stuck, we can spend some time going through it, or maybe eventually one of you guys will get up and do it instead of me, and see how it feels. All right, so we will stop and break, and let's plan on being back by like 7, 10 max, like in your seat, and then Justin will get started.